Hey fellow barons, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Manor Lords, episode two, Growing a Town. I'm firing my hunter because there's no more animals for him to hunt and putting him as a forger instead. All right, the saw pit got done, so I'm gonna hire a saw pit worker as well. Moving people around a lot uh, early on is pretty normal because there's a lot of separate micro tasks to manage. And then eventually as your population balloons, um, you can have people in positions permanently, even year round when it doesn't make sense. Like always having people that are foragers, just because it's a lot of micromanagement to move them every time it's out of season. Uh, but when you have enough people, that might not matter. All right, this will be number five and development point. The settlement level has increased. The next settlement level requires two level two Burgers plots and at least five level one or higher. So that means that I could have these original five houses and two of them could be leveled up to two. Um, because we leveled up, all right, let me read this. A strong militia is a paramount to the survival of any settlement. Luckily, a shipment of weapons has just arrived and you will now be able to create your first uh, militia banners to serve you and protect your people. However, we will need more weapons to equip all the people as the settlement grows, either by making them or importing them from other lands. So if we go to the military tab here, I can click create new unit and we imported spears so we can make a spear militia. We have 20 spears and 20 shields. So as the male population in this colony goes up, uh, up to 20, I can have up to 20 spearmen. As you can see, mousing over the families here, I only have 14 uh, males, seven females. So I only have 14 spearmen as a result. Females don't fight. Um, putting them in here doesn't mean they're drafted. If I wanted to draft them, I'd have to rally to them to the map, but I'm not gonna do that because I'd rather them working right now because there's no threats. There's actually, that's not true. There are threats, there are bandit camps around, uh, but 14 spearmen, I'd rather attack a bandit camp with like 20 spearmen as our survival rate's gonna be a little bit higher. Um, as far as the development goes, I'm just gonna pick for myself. I'm gonna go with heavy plow so that we can do some farming. I have a particularly fertile map tile. So unlocking heavy plow makes sense. And in fact, I don't think it would be a particularly bad idea once we have some basic housing and everyone moved out of the worker camps uh, to use said plow. So let's see, how many empty houses do I have right now? One, two, three, three empty houses. So if I build these other two, Right now, I can get rid of that worker camp. The other thing I'm gonna need to do is this logging camp, I need to clear the uh, restricted work area because all of the trees that I had marked down initially have since been cut. Uh, instead, I'm going to assign a work area here because eventually the town is gonna to start growing in that direction and it makes sense to cut down those trees. Granted, nobody's working in that facility right now, but they will be eventually. So six months of food, 11 months of fuel, that's pretty good. And it's going up. All right, let's get those last two houses built. Will I be going for a three field system? I will be. So if we want the Burgages to be level two, uh, we need to give them a church and then to have a, a small variety of food, a source of clothing and a source of fuel. Uh, we are going to be me meeting fuel pretty soon just because I have a woodcutter. Uh, so the source of food could be hunting and berries or vegetables and berries, right? Because this farm in this backyard is already starting to produce vegetables. Uh, but the more food variety, the better. It will keep them happy. Is the work management similar to Timberborn? Yeah. Yeah, pretty similar.
All right, come on, let's be build these houses before more people move in. What they were doing just now was moving the weapon shipment into these houses. So as you can see, the actual houses are storing these spears and shields. So that when I need a draft, they grab the spears and shields that are stored in the house to use in the defense or, uh, I guess, attack. Because it's not always defense of the, uh, the town. And also, let's rename our town, shall we? Uh, Yodaville, like always. We are Yodaville now. See? It's official. Cheers. For those that don't know, Yoda's my dog, my sidekick. Uh, this little guy. Okay, one more house to build. And then we can... Oh, God, someone moved in. Okay, I'm going to make one more house so that uh, my... the people in the work camp can finally move out of there. It's like not letting me build... Uh... Actually, I could build it this way. There we go. And I'll set these to high priority. I really want to get people out of that work camp. They'll be a lot happier when they're not. Ah, they keep moving in. All right, fine. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make them homeless temporarily so that I stop getting immigration to fill up the houses that I don't want filled. It's better to do that in June than December, right? So this is one of the larger houses, right? This is the one with the, the side slot. So I could click this to expand li living space uh, so that the family that lives in here, it, it has like double the family count. Um, the thing is doing that doesn't increase the, the plot count either. Um, and then in the case that if you specialize these plots, or like, let's say, for instance, I turn them all into boyers. Then that's two families working to make bows, which is probably overkill. Um, so there's a lot of reason not to have these, like, large extended slots. Uh, so I can add it to this house, but I'll, I'll have to make... I'll have to remember not to specialize that house in a um, production facility that I wouldn't want too many people working. All right, so I have uh, a little bit of homelessness, but that will go away in just a second, because we're rushing those houses. So we are going to now, the goal is to become a medium village. That is the goal. So that means two Burgage uh, plots at level two or higher. which means a church and clothing. So thinking about clothing, we do have a hunter over here that's, uh, well, no one's currently employed there, but now they are because the animals came back. Uh, so right next to the hunter, I am going to make a tannery uh, so that the leathers that the hunter or the hides that the hunter gets can be tanned because one of the types of uh, clothing demands, as you can see here, is leather, linen, yarn, clothes, shoes, or cloaks. Um, clothes, shoes, and cloaks count for more. Uh, leather, linen, and yarn count for one each, and then clothes, shoes, and cloaks count for two each. Um, which is important to note. That the higher level clothing is functionally better. But if you take a look at, like, food variety, these are the houses that have been provided food. Because I have, um, meat, bread, berries and soon to be vegetables, uh, they have pretty good food variety and they're happy about that. So as a result, as you can see up here, market food variety is raising the approval of the town. And with these last two burgers plots done, 
I will eliminate the homelessness. Oh, we have bandits stealing our bread. Okay, I'll deal with that soon, but not yet. Stupid bandits. In order to build a church, I need 10 planks. So we're waiting for this saw pit worker to saw the plank, to saw the timber into planks to mill the wood. And uh, they're waiting to get an ox. Now what I could do here is in advance, I could designate one of my two ox as permanently um, assigned to the saw pit. In the case of, like, plank emergencies, maybe that's worth it. The only time I would really consider that is for farmhouses. For farmhouses to have a farming ox is pretty powerful, but your need for uh, planks is not high enough to tie up one of your ox as a permanent uh, assigned to a saw pit. Unless, of course, you have tons of ox, which I don't. I only have two oxen. I don't have, like, 20. All right, come on, build these houses already. And here's the expansion slot. So you can see there's the main house and then the uh, cottage side house. And this allows for this house to have two residing families instead of one. Just again, remember that if you specialize them as any of these specialty roles, everyone in that house will be specialized. So if I make them a tailor, they will all, both families will be tailors and they will be tailoring the same thing because you can't designate them separately. So they will either be able to tail clothes, cloaks, or gambesons, but not two different things. So there's a bit of a disadvantage to have combined housing like that. All right, I no longer have any homelessness because we got the burgage plots to correct for that. Uh, I am now waiting on planks. So given that I'm waiting on planks, Perhaps it is time to either hire another saw pit worker or to earmark one of the ox that we have as only for the saw pit, because that's what we're waiting on. You really like the uh, the tree movement in the storm? Yeah, the, the game is very pretty. So we still have just 10 planks. My militia's up to 16. We have uh, 16 men. And I have eight families and 10 houses. So there's still space for people to move in. As the, uh, as the approval goes up, people will move in. I'm not worried about that. We still have um, seven of fuel, eight of food. So supplies are even going up. And if we need more fuel, I can always hire more woodcutters, too. All right, come on, saw pit, pit workers. Yeah, heights, go. Show some hustle. Make some planks. There he goes. There's also, like, a in-person view. The game prefaces that it's, like, buggy, as you can see. But you can run around your town as the lord. If you want. I'm not really sure that there's reason to do it other than the aesthetics. But it is a nice feature to be like, hey, hey, you with the cart, work faster. Mush! Okay, right, maybe, maybe I'll get fired if I keep saying it like that. Yeah, I look like Lord Farquaad. I know. There's only one character model. Maybe there is two. I don't know. I haven't played female characters. Maybe there's a female equivalent. Oh, nice. Nine months of food. That's pretty good. And we're starting to get new people moving in. Perfect. Well, let's uh, get another woodcutter then. So as you can see, the berry deposit is dwindling as it was seasonal all along. So at this point... Uh, okay, the, the carpenters are making new planks. It's also probably the right time to build a farmhouse so that we can start plowing in the winter. Um, the uh, pun unintended. Uh, so take a look. Wheat is kind of everywhere. 
Wheat doesn't really matter. Barley and flax are the drivers here. Uh, so I'm going to lay my farm fields out with barley in mind because um, I know I can put wheat anywhere. So I'm going to aim for my plots to be, I don't know, maybe like 2.0, 2 point something. They don't really need to be an exact size. I think it would look a little sexier if they ran along this back king road here. Actually, you know what? Maybe I'll do an entire slice because even the fertility here is okay. So I'll do a whole slice like this. So 3.7. That's a big farm. Um, there is actually this well in the way. Uh, so I'm going to move the well. Wells are really cheap. So, I, you know, you can blow them up and it's not a problem. Uh, so where to move the well? I'll move it... Here. And then we just need the supplies, the one timber from the well to be moved. But that's what people in the storehouse do. And I also now have the planks to make a church. So let's get that going. Churches uh, require a lot of resources, so they take a bit of time to build. There we go. So I'm going to say the well is probably more important highest and the church I'm going to set to lowest because I don't need to rush the church. I would actually rather rush the farmhouse if I had to pick the two. So I'm going to put the farmhouse here because it's going to be right next to the granary. And then is the... Okay, and then I have to wait for the supplies to go away. So I'm going to pin this supplies just so that I can see when it vanishes. Now, things don't necessarily need streets, uh, to answer your question. If I wanted to, I could put like a well in the middle of nowhere, but it wouldn't be connected to the road network. So in the case of a well, that doesn't help at all. Uh, but you can have things like, um, like hunter's cabins or berry pick uh, forgers out in the middle of the woods with no road connection. People will just traverse to them more slowly, meaning that they will be less efficient um, uh, less efficient workplaces as a result. So not ideal to do that, but like, game won't stop you. I'd also like to expand my storehouse because it's getting pretty close to filling up and I need 10 more planks for that as well. And then once I get those 10 planks, I'm going to unassign that, um, or I'll keep it going a little bit longer. But then eventually I'm going to unassign that livestock to the saw pit, so the saw pit can, the oxen can work anywhere. Okay, the well is done. The tannery is done. Nice. And now the store pit, uh, the storehouse is growing. Okay, you no longer have oxen assigned to you. You'll have to borrow from the town. Come on, someone move the supplies. You're killing me now. Once more people move in, I'll hire a tanner. Oh, they literally just... All right. Uh, and now all the our, of our current houses are full. Uh, so it would behoove me to lay out some additional plots for more houses. What I could do is I could have it really fill up like that, fill the space. But I'd, I'd, I like to, even though the game is flexible in this way, I like to have like uh, efficient houses. So I'll fill it up like that. And then maybe put like a, uh, like a triangular larger house here that has a extension slot because it fills the triangle because these are king's roads they, they're not deletable I'm stuck with them and I'll work with them I'd rather have it look organic anyway so now we have a tanner for the hides that we have good and they're making new food stalls 
This supplies is still still there. Can an oxen pick that up? And I think what I'll do, waiting for that oxen to pick that up, is to start laying out the rest of the farm fields. Just so that if there's something to be plowed, uh, they can start plowing. So this is the fertility for barley. So I'm going to envision, I don't know, one field like this. And then right above the supplies, put another field. And I'll aim for like a three-sized... Yeah, that works. 2.9. Uh, there is this hitching post here that we'll have to move because it's going to be in the way of the fields. So that uh, is going to be highest priority because it's in the way. Also, there's other supplies here that's in the way. So the way the farm fields work is that there is um, fertility depending on the uh, the what you're planting there. So like, if we take a look at the flax here... It's 39% fertility for flax. Uh, there's 57 for wheat and 51 for barley. Uh, even at 39%, that's still pretty good for flax. You'll still get a decent amount of yield. Um, but you should definitely plan to have the highest yield possible. So, like, if I wanted to grow flax, I could have three smaller fields here rotating for flax. Uh, and you want to also rotate your crops so that um, you restore the fertility so, like, on this one, I can say, let's go with wheat, wheat, fallow. But actually, I I put it here because it's useful for barley. So I'm going to go wheat, barley, fallow. Uh, because there's a, a way more finite space for barley on this map than wheat. I could grow wheat, like, anywhere in my territory. It's all the same fertility, more or less. But only people that work in the farmhouse are going to be building that. Okay, I am tired of these bandits, so let's fight them. So there's a bandit camp right over here. That's probably the one stealing all my stuff. So I'm rallying all of my spearmen, Militia. Um, so in order to do that, you go to the army tab. You click on the unit that you want. These are the stance types. I pretty much only use balance, but it's like giving up ground, which might be useful for archers. And then there's like pushing forward, which is really useful if you have heavily armored units. And then the other thing to note is don't run to positions because it will fatigue your units incredibly. And then by the time they get to their where they're fighting, they're going to be like exhausted. Um, so make sure that when you have your unit selected, like I'm sending my spearmen here, I want them to walk there. It will take a lot longer for them to get there, but they're going to be... Uh, mo far more effective. So if you if you see here, their cohesion and fatigue, uh, if they ran all the way there, their fatigue would be like minus 90, and they would be almost not combat effective. Now, running back home once they're done with the combat makes sense so that you can disband them quicker, but don't run to your fights, or you will uh, find yourself losing more often than you win. So taking a look at the map here, uh, that is the only bandit camp on the entire map, this group of outlaws. And um, each bandit camp is about 18, like, bandits, which they're really easy to kill. Unless you go half-cocked and exhausted. The other thing is, um, depending on terrain, your spearmen are going to prefer, like, open yes. terrain and not, like, fighting in the woods or whatever. And the brigands will come to you. Oh, here we go. Here's 16 brigands coming to me. So it's better if I just stand here and wait for them to arrive. Because I will be rested and cohesive and fight them on territory that I prefer. Um, forcing them to do the nasty marching because as you can see, they're more effective in the woods. So their effectiveness will drop as soon as they exit. As you can see. So my effectiveness is 116% because I've been sitting here, rested, and waiting in the open. And they've been sprinting through the woods, so they don't have an effectiveness bonus. No mercy! Rallying your militia does diminish your production and potentially your population if you lose. So the reason I'm doing this, I will also say um, clearing out bandit camps is super powerful. You'll gain a lot of money and you will 
become really powerful really quickly. It's not in any way balanced. It's stupidly unbalanced. So go after every brick and camp you can, um, because it's massive profits. Now there's multiple unit types. There is archers, uh, polearm, spear, militia footmen, and also retinue soldiers. And there are also mercenaries you can hire. Uh, really early on, you're not gonna have a lot of money for mercenaries. Um, but later on, when you're rolling in money, mercenaries are a good way for you to fight pro uh, wars without risking too many of your own civilians. So we've killed two of them so far. And at some point, as you can see that white flag icon, they will rout. We don't have to kill every single one. Yep, they are, they're dying. And they're routing. We didn't lose anyone because I used tactics. I waited out in the open field. I made them march through the forest. So now I'm gonna tell them to run to positions and loot the bandit camp. I'm upgrading my hitching post to small stables so they can have more oxen, as you'll understand why in a second. So now, uh, here is what what I was talking about. If you run to position, is because my effectiveness is plummeting. And then when you clear out a bandit camp, you can either send it to the nearest town or take it for your personal treasury. Sending it to the town allows you to reinvest into your town, which is probably a better option really early on when you're poor, your town is poor. Your own treasury is how you hire mercenaries and the like, so that's more useful later on when you're fighting big scale battles. So I'm gonna send it to the town. And then I'm gonna tell my people to come back into the territory here uh, so that I can uh, disband them and have them go back to work. So now that they're back in the territory, disband unit, and they go back to work. With the regional wealth that I just gained from clearing out that bandit camp, I can now say, hey, you know what? I would like to have chicken, 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 carrot, carrot, goat, and goat. Pretty dang powerful, if you ask me, and I still have 187 regional wealth left over. I have only used half of it. And every single house is now adding either hides or food passively through their extension slots. So, pretty dang awesome. All right, did we move? No, there's still supplies laying out. Still supplies laying out. Okay. We'll be able to move the supplies soon because the reason I built these small stables is so that I can also hire more oxen to transport stuff with the wealth we made from killing the bandits. Oh, and another bandit camp was just sighted. Uh, yeah, I'm absolutely gonna wanna march on that. So it's useful to note that the other barons will go after the bandits too and it behooves you to beat them to it because there's so much value to be gained. Not only that, but it will also increase your influence, allowing you to claim new, new territories uh, by clearing bandit camps. So bandit camps, it, don't pass them up. They're incredibly, incredibly powerful tools or powerful to clear. So again, I'm rallying my poor spearmen that just finished and I'm gonna make them walk. Uh, the camp is here, so I'm gonna make them walk here and the bandits will probably engage me from that distance. I don't want to march all the way because I'd rather be rested into the fight. Uh, Barrier deposits are depleted. Gonna fire all the foragers. And... Timber's looking good. Planks are looking low. I'll cut more plank. Well, actually, I don't need to saw pe pit people. Um, I have a year of supplies. A year of food and 14 months of fuel, so like, no issue there. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just have more builders for right now. To get more built. Because I have a bunch of housing plots queued and uh, stables queued and everything. So I'd rather just have the extra manpower for construction. Uh, the goats, I don't believe, provide meat, no. It says, provides a passive yield of hides. Uh, which is useful to make leather, to make clothing, 
to meet our clothing demands because right now in our marketplace, food is pretty good, fuel is pretty good, clothing not so good. So those extra goats will help with clothing. Chief Dog, thank you for the bits. And Rotomeshi, thank you for the resub like a while ago and ink for bits. I missed a whole lot. So cheers. Okay, these, uh, no. Is the stable done? No. Not yet. I need people in the storehouse to gather supplies. I have people in the storehouse, it's just they don't have oxen. And also the storehouse is under construction. That's probably the main issue. I'm going to put that as highest. Because I was uh, enlarging it. Alright, I'm not close. Oh, yep. Yeah, no, I was close enough. Come to me. The other thing is the my units here, because they won against one battle, they also now have an experience bonus because they're not fresh. So this group of bandits is now against going up against a unit that has been tried, tested, and prevailed over other bandits. Uh, so I have a nice morale boost as a result. So the combat here is very reminiscent of like Total War, I feel, with the units and everything. It's like, I I could be playing Total War right now, and you just wouldn't know it. <laughs> even the, even the, the unit tags look straight out of Total War. Good ass, thanks for gifting that a sub too. I like how this, the, the, what, their hype man in the back? Yeah, get him! As he watches his brothers in arms die. It's alright, your time's coming. Alright, I did lose one Spearman. Not a big deal, given the cost. Or given the benefits, uh, it'll be alright. So, the other thing to note is defeating that um, bandit group, my influence went up uh, 320. So I gained a whole bunch of uh, influence by clearing it out. And I'm going to send this to the nearest town as well. And now I have even more regional wealth. So I'm going to make them run home and scan the map and there's no more bandits. Cool. Alright, it would be super awesome if... Uh... Okay, the storehouse did get built. Good. Now the supplies will be pulled out of it. The yep, there we go. We, you can see this person working. Actually, they're unassigned. So they're probably building something with it. But they're pulling the supplies off of the fields. And militia? Return back. So one thing to note is that the spear and the shield lost is lost, right? The person that died, does. I don't have that. The other weird consequence of dying not on my own map tile is I don't really have to bury the dead. So he died somewhere around here. There's a corpse. Yeah, there they are. There are a bunch of corpses here. Um, when corpses are on your own region, you have to bury them, either in a church or a corpse pit. But when they're not on your own region, it like doesn't matter. So one of these dudes is like my own dude, but like he will never get a burial because that's not the way the game works. Uh, but if you did, like let's say I was defending against bandits and I killed a whole bunch of bandits, I would either need to build the church, which has a uh, crypt, or I would need to build a corpse pit uh, to bury it. Otherwise, there's a huge morale penalty for leaving corpses unburied. Massive. It's really bad. So, so don't do that. There we go. So the um, this field is all set for more planning. Uh, that's slightly larger. Let me have it be the same size. 2.8? Yeah, that's close enough. And now I just need this one supplies to get pulled away. 
So, uh, what is this? This is wheat, barley, fallow. So this will be fallow, wheat, barley. So that all the farm fields, of the three farm fields that I have, two of them will be active at any given time, and one will be fallow. And they rotate what they do. So I will always have a wheat field active, and I will always have a barley field active. Oh, that supplies is gone. Nice. Uh, that's too big. There we go. 2.5? No, too small. These are big, big farm fields, mind you. There we go. That's a 3.0. So then this will be barley, fallow wheat. So as you can see, fallow in the top slot, fallow in the bottom slot, fallow in the middle. Uh, wheat middle, wheat top, wheat bottom, and then barley top. Barley middle, barley bottom. So all three farm fields rotate around. It will play offline? Uh, at least in this version, yes. I don't know if there's going to be a day one update that changes that. I can't speak to that. Uh, the farmhouse is now built. And I am going to add a plowing station to allow oxen. Uh, and then also I'm going to hire another oxen. Because the stable here just got upda upgraded too. So the stable can accommodate two oxen, whereas the hitching post can only accommodate one. The other stable I'm going to set as highest so that I have more oxen. Really early on, typically, your bottleneck will be just like workhorses and work oxen. Um, so investing money into oxen and stables uh, usually speeds everything up pretty good. Especially if you get the heavy plow development, which allows you to use oxen for plowing. Because my goodness, don't plow by hand if you can help it. Oxen are slightly better than humans, believe it or not. Uh, you can only order new animals like once every 30 days, so it's going to be a minute before I can order more oxen. All right, so the only thing I'm missing right now is church level. So let's go ahead and bump the church from lowest to highest. Because as soon as I get that church built, uh, we get a level, we get to be a medium village. There's other things that I should prepare ahead of time. Um, so now that we're growing wheat, I'm probably going to want like a windmill. And windmills that are not near trees, as you can see, like putting them in the middle of the forest sucks. Putting them out in the open is good. Uh, so I'm going to put a windmill down. And I'm going to put a communal uh, oven down. So the windmill will grind the grain into wheat, or wheat into grain, sorry, I said that backwards. And then the communal oven will bake the flour into bread. And I have that right next to my granary, so there, there's a short run between them. Uh, the other thing I would like to do is to set up a stone collection pit. I'll put that here. So we can start collecting stone, uh, because stone will be required to expand the granary, for instance, and other, some other buildings. And then also I would like to get um, clay and iron. Because we're going to need to start replacing the spears that we need for the defense of our colony. So here's a road to the clay. And the road to the spears is going to look a little weird because I don't want it running through the um, through the berry deposits. You want to leave the berry deposits undisturbed. So iron, clay, stone, all are going to be very useful. Uh, because I'm on the center tile, there's also these like um, these destroyed buildings which you can rebuild or just demolish. In my case, I'm just going to demolish them. I don't need them. Uh, I'd rather just have the stone that they contain. These are king roads out here, so I can't change the roads at all, as you can see. King road, can't remove. Uh, but I might as well clear those ruins out. And... Also, let's go ahead and plan for the tavern. So I don't have a malt house, uh, and I don't have brewers, but I'll put the tavern here. So we have marketplace, tavern, church, 
And I'm putting down the tavern so that I can start planning some additional housing. So that we can grow. We all know what that means, don't we? And for that, I need more timber. So, time to yell timber as we cut it down. Thank you for tuning in to Mana Lords, which originally streamed live on Twitch April 16th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Rodamont.com has a link to it, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. Hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow Manor Lords. <laughs>